The following program is brought to you by Arlington Community Media, where we tell your story. Natural grass or artificial turf, how should Arlington proceed in the future? A forum to discuss the facts of this turf case unfolded at Town Hall this week. But are there now more questions than answers as town meeting members pour over Article 12? We have a report. In less than two years, the Battle of Anonymy and its legacy will be 250 years old. What's Arlington going to do to celebrate this semi-quincentennial? We talked to a member of the Arlington 250 Committee to find out. And Dom Delicious, the women-owned and operated gala, is a smashing success at Town Hall's auditorium this week. So much so that Arlington, we think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered, giving you stories that count from people who care. Reliable, trustworthy, dependable. This is the nationwide award-winning ACMI News. Town meeting is set to consider a very controversial warrant article, Article 12, next week to study the use and new installation of artificial turf at town facilities. Hello, I'm Paul Whirlin. And I'm James Milan. So glad that you can join us today. You may recall that some town meeting members want to impose a moratorium on turf fields until more studies on the potential risks can be conducted. Before Article 12 goes to town meeting, a panel discussion took place at a jam-packed town hall auditorium on Tuesday, May 2nd. Whether anything was made clearer that night depends on who you ask. There seems to be little common ground, so to speak, when it comes to using either turf or natural grass in Arlington. Including newly posted 3D renderings, project background, and FAQ about turf. An estimated 250 area residents packed the Town Hall Auditorium to find out more about the advantages or disadvantages of using artificial turf or natural grass on specific athletic fields throughout Arlington. Proponents of artificial turf say the demand for athletic sports in Arlington is great and maintaining natural grass fields with such a high turnover of participants would be nearly impossible. But those against artificial turf say this plastic product is made of forever chemicals known as PFAS, known carcinogens that can present a health threat to both humans and the surrounding wildlife. And the deeper I dive, the more convinced I become that um, artificial turf fields are not the way we should be going. The science is the science, but it's how the science is interpreted is, I think, where, uh, where we're at. One lingering issue in this ongoing controversy is that proponents of artificial turf feel that organic natural grass fields are not a good alternative to turf because it's easily ripped up after rain or snowstorms, and they could be difficult to maintain given this town's limited playing space. Those opposing artificial turf say that its use carries with it health and environmental hazards and that local children shouldn't be test subjects for potentially dangerous chemicals. Uh, there is talk about, about artificial turf that will be free of PFAS. It's not there yet. I mean, that would be a hope that, that we could find it. Well, yeah, it's definitely difficult. I mean, use it today for an example. I mean, it's pouring outside right now. We had a closed field actually yesterday, partially yesterday and today. And um, we have, you know, 6,000 athletes that, in town, youth athletes that aren't able to be on the fields. now. All of our fields are used from 7 a.m. till you know dusk, pretty much Saturday, Sunday, till uh, right after school, till 8 o'clock, sometimes 10 o'clock at night during the week, and uh, it just um, really forces uh, difficult playing conditions on the fields, particularly the goal mouths for uh, in a soccer field, uh, lacrosse field, uh, the crease areas, and that can present some um, really some unsafe playing experiences for youth and. That's just the, one of the benefits of turf, that, that uh, it doesn't happen. Children are not small adults. They are small bodies growing very fast, very quickly, and this impacts how they uh, process the chemicals and the toxins that they're exposed to. Uh, the other environmental hazards, as we know, is the escape of the crumb rubber and the microplastics 400 pounds a year into the surrounding environment. In Arlington, that means into Mill Brook, into conservation land, and since it's into Mill Brook in, at Cook's Hollow, into the food chain, into the next lobster roll or fish fillet that you buy. 
but there's ways that you can mitigate that. I know a lot of their issues are certainly with the crumb rubber infill. You could use natural organic infill. Um, a lot of the turf products right now are um, uh, you know, advertised as certainly PFAS free coming out of the um, manufacturing plants. And that's something that we could certainly write into any specifications that we want moving forward with the turf field. These fields have a risk both for human health and also for environmental health. Uh, which is being, uh, I feel, a little bit shoved to the side in this discussion. I don't know that there is a, discuss a, a good solution, to be perfectly honest. Um, we might need to adjust our expectation of how many playing days are actually possible. As you might imagine, there were some contentious moments in the forum. One came roughly 90 minutes into the presentation when town meeting member Jordan Weinstein confronted Phil Lasker, who's on the Park and Rec Commission. Lasker was also on the panel Tuesday night. Phil Lasker has also managed site development projects for both the public and private sectors. The chairman of the Park and Recreation Commission, who's sitting among you right now, is a senior project manager at David White & Sons, which specializes in... This is not relevant. Sale, Abby, please stop. Sports. We're going to let... The, we're going to let... Excuse me. I have a right to... We're, I have a right to ask this question. You, ha you have 30 seconds which specializes in the design, sale, and installation of sports fields. My question Correct. is, shouldn't he be asked to recu recuse himself from any decision-making or policy-making when it comes to artificial turf in Arlington in order to reduce the appearance of a conflict of interest? You, you can refer okay. that and question. And that's a legitimate question. You, you can refer that question to Doug Heim, who I have consulted with about this. So yeah. we're, okay, we're gonna do our panel questions. Phil, if you wanna respond to yeah. this, you can, or we can have someone from the oh, town. Oh, I would, I would love to respond to this. I, like any other volunteer in any other border commission, is acting as a professional to provide professional guidance and advice to the community. So there are architects on the historic commission there are toxicologists on the Conservation Commission. So if you want to question me about my professional ethics, why don't you question them as well, okay? And I have consulted with Doug Heim, town council, about this, and there is no conflict. And let me tell you too, Jordan, why I volunteer. I volunteer for my kids. My parents were volunteers. They're in their 80s, and they still volunteer. And I want to show my kids that this is a responsibility to my community, okay? One person posted on the Arlington List just after the forum saying, quote, lots of facts, lots of talking past each other. This panel discussion was co-sponsored by the Arlington Park and Recreation and Conservation Commissions and is posted to our YouTube page youtube.com slash ACMI TV. Again, that's youtube.com slash ACMI TV. Meantime, another major controversy is brewing at Minuteman High School. The school community learned this week that newly appointed Superintendent Dr. Kathleen Dawson informed Principal George Clement that his contract will not be renewed when it's up at the end of this school year. No details have been shared publicly with the school community regarding Dr. Dawson's decision. An email circulating this week states that teachers, students, parents, and administrators are frustrated by this and that, quote, for many years, Principal Clement has been highly regarded by the Minuteman community for his leadership during the pandemic and other challenging transition periods, as well as for his compassion and humor, both as an educator and an administrator. Hundreds of Minuteman students and parents signed a petition in Clement's support. One comment from an Arlington student states, Mr. Clement has made an absolutely incredible impact on every student who has walked through that door. He has always and will always be an extreme asset to Minuteman. As of this broadcast, nearly 1,300 students have signed the petition. According to Your Arlington, the Minuteman Faculty Association Union also gave a vote of no confidence in the superintendent's decision. And a student walkout is planned for Monday morning, May 8th, in support of Clement. ACMI News reached out to both Superintendent Dr. Kathleen Dawson and Principal, Principal Clement's office. So far, we have yet to hear back. 
We are just two years away from marking the 250th anniversary of the Battle of Monotomy. Where has the time gone? Yeah, Lexington and Concord get a lot of credit when it comes to day one of our Revolutionary War, but the bloodiest battle fought that day, April 19, 1775, happened right here. The Arlington 250th Committee has been formed to solicit ideas about how to celebrate this landmark day in our nation's history. ACMI news correspondent Summer Maxwell recently spoke to Michael Ruderman, a member of the Arlington 250th Committee, to get his take on some really good ideas. So we have a number of appointed members who are looking for volunteers, who are looking for ideas, looking for people who are willing to work on these things, uh, do some fundraising, do some scheduling and organizing with other towns. Uh, basically, we're just putting all the ideas on a sheet right now and looking at what could be fun and what could have some significance. There could be walking tours basically from one end of Mass Ave in Arlington to the other. There were scenes that happened in the battle of the day. Uh, there are these fabulous documents that um, uh, these depositions that the Commonwealth actually collected of people who were there on, at the time and in the place, and they took sworn statements of what happened. And there's a long list of them that came from, well, we were Cambridge then. We were known as the second precinct of Cambridge, a you know, village named Monotomy. But I could walk you through one end of Mass Ave to the other and say, Here's Deacon Adams's house. It was ransacked. The deacon had run for his life. His wife, who was only 10 days or so after giving birth to a baby, was thrown out of the house by, 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 by the redcoats at point of bayonet, and they tried to burn it. Or further down, of course, at Jason Russell's, where there was a battle. And all the way, all the way down to uh, the old Whittemore homestead, right at the very end of Mass Ave at Alewife Brook. There were things that happened all the way along uh, that entire two stretch. And it would be wonderful to uh, try to get people to try to imagine that scene without the buildings, without, without the modern day infrastructure. Think of it all as, as farms and village houses and then walk through the actual steps of the history. A couple of days ago, somebody brought me this idea. Since we know that so many towns sent their militia companies here to Arlington, or Monotomy back then, uh, on April 19th, 1775, and they marched in time to get here for the battle. Wouldn't it be cool to recreate that, to find out if there are contingents in all of these neighboring towns who would like to do a mini parade uh, or, or march, end up here in Monotomy, have some food and drink and celebration for them when they come? I think that would be one. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. If you want more information on our upcoming 250th anniversary, or if you have any ideas on how to mark it, just go to the town website, arlingtonma.gov. Again, that's arlingtonma.gov. May 14th, Mother's Day, is fast approaching. You can help celebrate the holiday and feast on a fantastic breakfast at the same time. The Julie A. Bankovich Foundation is hosting a buffet breakfast on Mother's Day, May 14th, to celebrate mom and to help the foundation create lifelong memories for those living with metastatic breast cancer. What's for breakfast, you ask? Well, how about scrambled eggs, pancakes, sausage, bacon, home fries, fruit, assorted pastries, bagels, coffee, tea, and a variety of juices. Sounds good to me. There will also be a raffle and photo section for you to take a special photograph with mom. Interested? You can purchase your tickets for your entire party. Also, be sure to select the time you want to attend. Just go to their website, jabf.org. Again, that's jabf.org. Zero Waste Arlington is joining area restaurants in an effort to reduce waste with their No Plastic Please initiative. That initiative kicked off late last month and partners with restaurants in providing reusable tableware for in-house dining and takeout utensils, straws, napkins, and condiment packages only to customers who request them. Sometimes items such as ketchup and mustard packets are needed, but often they are tossed out and wasted. According to Zero Waste Arlington, restaurants are starting to change their takeout routine so that consumers now have to ask for these items. 
The results are mutually beneficial to both consumers and restaurants by reducing waste and saving money. No Plastic Please isn't a ban. What it is, it's really a partnership with restaurants to reduce the amount of single-use, unnecessary waste in restaurants. So whether it's takeout or dine-in or delivery, those uh, napkins, forks, ketchup packets, chopsticks, straws, all of those things, if you don't need them, they will not be provided to you unless you ask. That's exactly what it is. And that's really where we came from with all of this, is looking at all of this collections in your glove compartment at home, takeout dining, especially since the pandemic is on the rise, especially with millennials, takeout delivery. So if you're getting food that's coming back to your home, you don't need any of that because you have it all, but yet you've been given it by default and it just becomes automatic waste. It's also an extra cost for restaurants. Mm -hmm. They don't want to give it either because it costs them money to put it in your bag. So with this, now we're really changing the model of uh, restaurants into a, a different model where it's not an automatic, you get this, it's a you have to ask for it. If you need it, it's still available to you, right? It's not a ban, so if you still need your straws or your, your utensils or your yeah, napkins when you're on the go, you can ask for them and you're provided with them. So far, six local eateries have taken the active step to be certified as no plastic please restaurants. Uh, and Arlington Heights is well represented because they are roasted <laughs> granola, Szechuan's dumpling, and the Heights Pub all here in Arlington Heights, as well as Punjab, Noodle Market, and Ja. For more information on this initiative, just go to zerowastearlington.org. Excuse me. Again, that's zerowastearlington.org. Some of you may know that Arlington has a sister city on the other side of the planet. Arlington and Nagokakyo, Japan, have been sister cities since the relationship was established way back in 1984. And this week, Nagokakyo students and adults are here visiting for their annual exchange. Their tour has included many stops, such as museums, a Boston Red Sox game, and right here at the ACMI studio. I think um, the Japanese students definitely are getting more exposure to other cultures. Uh, Japan is a pretty famously homogenous society. Uh, for students, I think it's just kind of about opening their eyes and getting them to try and use their English and relax. I mean, Americans, I think, are great people to practice on because we are kind of annoyingly friendly, I think, maybe you could consider. But um, so it's just about them being more comfortable and trying to use, use the language that they have in their head, just kind of unlock it. What do you think of seeing a, a local TV studio um, such as Arlington? Like, this is the first time to come to like a TV like things and like mm. so cool and like the cameras is so big and cool and everything is like so cool. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. cool. <laughs> That's okay. I mean it is pretty cool so <laughs> I, I know your feeling. <laughs> What cultural differences mm -hmm. did you see from America to Japan? Uh, like, kind people is so similar to here in Japan. Like, mm. There are so great people in here too, like in Japan too also. And like, uh, the, I, like I love the people in here and Japan too, so I think that is similar one. And the differences is like uh, after Corona, COVID like getting around, I like we in Japan we like usually we have masks over uh, all day, but I'm not doing now. But like in America, like most of people is don't doing masks, and I can yeah. see their faces and they're so cute. <laughs> yeah, so I like the difference in that. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And for the Arlington students, I think it's really important for them to um, to also just be able to trying to express themselves to people maybe who don't understand 100% of what you're saying at any time. It's good practice to sympathize with people who are learning something or people who are in a difficult situation. And I think they're doing a really good job with that. I think a lot of the students, every year we come in, people are very friendly and are very helpful to the students that we have. So this program is a great way to make bonds, but also to kind of help everybody understand what different cultures and different things are like. In all, 16 students paid a visit here to our Studio A. For nearly 30 years, Arlington has had this excellent student exchange campaign with the beautiful city of Nago Kakyo, Japan.
Last month on ACMI News, we interviewed Robin Cohen, the co-chair of Dom Delicious, an evening of culinary adventures. Dom Delicious was at Town Hall on Friday, April 28th, and it was an overwhelming success. Dom Delicious is a woman-owned gala, which included restaurants, food crafters, wine and spirits tasting, boutique shopping, silent auctions, and a lot more. This fundraiser, which benefits Arlington's own food link, attracted hundreds of area residents and also some top celebrities from places like America's Test Kitchen and this old house. This is incredible. Everybody has opened their hearts, their wallets to give us food and um, raffle tickets and all kinds of great gifts. It's just been amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Um, La, La Dame Escoffier is, is an incredible organization that actually has 43 chapters uh, worldwide, one of them being here in Boston. Um, and they host events like this all the time to, to raise money for community causes and, and philanthropic organizations. So really happy to be in Arlington tonight um, uh, for a great cause. I'm kind of here to talk about uh, tabletop design and summer entertaining and how you might um, approach your parties this summer, what kind of tab table landscapes you might be making um, to make entertaining more fun. It's an honor to be here. It's empowering to be with a group of all women. I'm used to working with all men, so it's just, it's a big change and it's, it's, it's yeah. a pleasure to be here. I am the person that goes in and makes it look dirty and messy at first, but to create the spaces. So we get the machines and excavators in there and create the patios and pizza ovens and outdoor kitchens and pergolas and sitting walls and patios to create the space that each homeowner wants to fit their family and their space and how they would like to entertain. How satisfying is it for you to see? I mean, both of you are involved in before and after. Yep. Oh, I, lo yeah. I love all of it. Yeah. The destruction yeah. bit to like your vision that's in your mind that com comes from paper yeah. and it, you build it into a reality. And then once it's all done, you look and go, man, am I good? Kinda, <laughs> but you know it because you put the love in it. You know, if you really love what you do from like, yeah. for me, from picking the hardscape materials to the lights to the plants and you put it all together, it's like, a, it's a puzzle piece. But according to the client too and their taste and style, right? People are already asking about next year. We have vendors that didn't get in this year that want to be in it. So I think we've created something here that's pretty special. We are sponsoring a, um, an award at Boston University for female culinary students. Boston University is right behind me here passing out literature about their culinary program. And we're also supporting Food Link right here in Arlington. So at the end of the event, um, any food that's left over will be collected up by Food Link and distributed to people who have food insecurity issues and need that food. Um, plus, we'll be making a donation to them as well. ACMI was there covering this star-studded gala event. This was the first Dom Delicious event in Arlington. And you just heard it, it will not be the last. Congratulations to Robin Cohen and the crew for a very fun and successful celebration of life. Speaking of celebrating life, get ready for some roof-raising music at the Regent Theater on Friday, May 12th. And don't leave your funk at home. Arlington's own Grammy-nominated singer Debo Ray is kicking off the first of five performances at the Regent with a show called A Little Wonder, a tribute to the great Stevie Wonder. And Debo Ray's bringing her all star band with her. Ooh, her hair is long, his feet are hard and pretty. He spills his life apart in the streets of New York City. He's well, uh, the Regent Theater has believed in me so much that they're giving me five shows and five opportunities to do totally different music. So this first show is going to be a Stevie Wonder tribute, followed by some shows featuring my original music, a classic rock show, a Halloween theme show. So. Lots of good times. I have a background, my family's uh, all Christian, a lot of pastors, so bringing in the spirit, like a, 
momentum of spirit is a big part of what I like to do in my music. And especially in the show with Stevie, I mean, it's no brainer that I'm gonna do that. Now you're affiliated with Berkeley. Uh, how does it feel to be entertaining right here? You have been at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, Carnegie Hall, other places, but you know, little humble region theater in your hometown, how does that feel? It's home, it's home. I love it here. Like I used to live on Boston, Boston Ave in Medford when I was growing up and passing by the Regent Theater, it's like a homecoming, home base, homegrown vibe. The Kennedy Center is the Kennedy Center and I loved it, but I loved knowing who comes to my shows and seeing how th that impacts my neighborhood. I love that. Debo Reyes is celebrating 50 years since Mr. Wonder released his groundbreaking album, Inner Visions, and a lot more. And it's all happening at the Region Theater on Friday, May 12th at 8 p.m. Tickets are going fast. For more information, just go to the Regent website, regenttheater.com. Again, that's Regent Theater with a T-R-E at the end, dot com. The spring sports schedule is well underway, and the weather, for the most part, is cooperating. Let's go to our sports reporter, Owen Tambor, for the latest. Owen? Thanks, guys. A rough week for Boston Bruins fans as the Bruins imploded and choked away a 3-1 series lead over the Florida Panthers in Round 1. They finally fell in heartbreaking fashion in Game 7 at home on Sunday, April 30th, when the Panthers scored the game-winning goal in overtime. On the positive side, the Boston Celtics wrapped up their first round series in six games against the Atlanta Hawks and began their next round against the Philadelphia 76ers, where the series is now tied 1-1, heading back to Philly for Game 3 on Friday, May 5th. And to great surprise, the Boston Red Sox are currently exceeding expectations, and the fans are feeling the buzz. Despite being in fourth place in the AL East, the Sox sit at an 18-14 and 14 record and will look to move up in the division as they begin to creep up on the Blue Jays and the Orioles. That's it for this week's Boston Edition ACMI Sports Update. I'm Owen Tambor, and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks very much, Owen. That'll do it for us here this week at ACMI News. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Paul Whirlin. And I'm James Milan. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue.